11 iOS features that's this many and one more that you may not know about today on Dottotech. Steve Dotto here. How the heck you doing this fine day? At Dottotech, we make technology easy so you can do more. More what? Archery. Archery would be fun, would it not? Please subscribe to this channel, take a second, click on the subscribe button and then hit that notification bell so you hear about any upcoming videos from us on this channel and we produce several per week. They're all awesome, I believe. Today's is especially awesome because we are going to be talking about 11 features that you may or may not know about in iOS 11. Why 11 features? Because this is the 11th version of Apple's mobile operating system. Isn't that like poetry? All right, let's get going with my first feature, and that is something that you're using all the time, but you might not know just how much control you have over it. When you swipe up from the bottom in iOS, you invoke something called the control center. And the control center has lots of useful little utilities in it, things like your flashlight and access to your alarm clock and calculator and a quick, quick access to your camera. That's all there in the control center, and you're using it all the time, I imagine. I know I use it all the time. But did you know that it was eminently customizable? And not only is it customizable, but there's also some very cool additional features that are built into it. You reach the control center control center by going into settings and there you will find control center. Tap on that and go into customize controls and you'll see at the top all of the controls that you currently have set up within your device. Uh, but then as you scroll down, you will find all of the additional control center items that you may be able to add. So you can customize this center uh, to suit your needs and to do the things that you do the most often with your phone. That is the first tip that we have of our 11 tips is you can customize your control center to your heart's content. Now that brings us to the second of our tips, the number two tip, which is some of these different control center items which are really darn useful. Now the one I want to show you right to start is this one called magnifier. Now let me show you how you add it. Tap on the plus and then you'll see it appears in the top section now. So when we go back now into the control center and swipe up, now we see the new feature available to us. You see that little magnifying glass there at the bottom? That is the magnifier. Now this is especially useful to people of my vintage. Tap on that and it takes advantage of the cameras in your iPhone to magnify whatever it is that you're looking at. Now where this is incredibly valuable is at places like restaurants, especially restaurants that have low light. Have you ever seen all of the people of a certain vintage in the restaurant looking at their, uh, at looking at their uh, menus and using their phone lights to shine a brighter light on the menu so they can read them, sometimes that isn't even good enough. Now, turn on the light and use the magnifier and you can read the restaurant uh, listings in even the fanciest of French restaurants and still be able to, and, and finally be able to order your Vichy Soie if you happen to, to like cold soup. But there you have it, the magnifier. It's the next of my features in iOS 7 that you may or may not know about, but now you do know about it, don't you? <laughs> Let's stay in the control center for a moment and I'm gonna show you one other item. And maybe it's just because of what I do for a living, but I love the ability to be able to turn on the screen recording function. This is something brand new in iOS and it allows us to record the phone screen. Now I use this occasionally for demos. I'll actually be using it in this channel from time to time, but this screen recording feature, what it does is you go in, let me open it up here, I'll invoke it, turn it on, and it'll do a little countdown, three, two, one, and now it's recording everything. It's not working, it keeps failing. Something going on, probably because I'm recording this screen right now. This is frustrating. What will happen most of the time when you use this is it will record the screen itself. It'll record everything that happens on the screen. You can record it and it saves it to your film strip as a video that you can use the way you would any other video that you've recorded on your camera. That's the screen recording feature, which happens most of the time in iOS, but not when I need it most, like right now. Still, pretty cool feature. 
Now I want to take you to another feature, and this one here is far more serious than the kind of fun that we've been having up to now, and this is the Do Not Disturb feature, which is also in the, if you go into your settings, you'll find it right under Notifications and Control Center, you'll find Do Not Disturb. Now, Do Not Disturb is designed specifically to deal with the issues of distracted driving, uh, or even distracted bike riding, or any distractedness. Um, what, what it does is it takes advantage of the velocimeter inside of the iPhone to know when you're in a car and a moving vehicle and it will automatically set up a do not disturb sequence if somebody's trying to call you or text you so you not, are not disturbed from the task at hand which is guiding said vehicle safely through, through the city or through the countryside. So what happens is you turn it on and I encourage everybody to do this. Turn it on and then you can have a few extra settings that allow you to customize it. Uh, the, probably the most important customization is down at the very bottom is it, you can set it up to automatically reply when somebody tries to reach out to you while you are engaged in driving. And so you can say automatically reply uh, with this kind of message. I'm driving with the do not disturb turn on. I will reach out to you as soon as I reach my destination when it's safe for me to communicate with you. This is not just a good thing. This could be a lifesaver. It could be a game changer. And when people get that message from you, they know that you're a responsible individual that's concerned about distracted driving and the issues that it has in our society today. And you are proactively taking steps to make sure that you're part of the solution and not part of the problem. Do not disturb, which is our fourth feature that uh, we're talking about today in iOS, uh, iOS 11. Now the next one, actually the next two, are a lot more fun. These take advantage of the camera. Now this is available for iPhone users in iPhone 7 and up. They put, uh, with a 7 and up, they started putting multiple camera lenses in the iPhone itself. So with two camera lenses, they can do some real magic. And the thing is, if, if you've just gotten one of these phones, you know exactly what I'm going to show you right now, is they've got a, the ability to take portraits as opposed to straight photographs. Uh, now the portraits take advantage of the dual lenses to create real depth of field. So you can have a very shallow focus where you focus on something that's very close by and have everything else blurred. It's a feature that you, portrait photographers have always used and typically you've had to have a high-end DSLR in order to do it. Now, this is how difficult it is. Open your photo app and swipe across to the portrait mode. As long as you have good light, it takes phenomenal portraits. Allow me to show you. I've taken a few. Uh, just even today out on our walk, uh, let me just open my photos. Here's a picture I took of Shan uh, and it is absolutely gorgeous with her in beautiful focus and the background blurred out. And that's just, a, this wasn't a shot that we set up. It was a snapshot that I took just the way you would normally with your, with your camera, with, uh, with, with your smartphone camera. Let me show you a picture I took of Farley a couple of weeks ago when it was snowing out just before I went away. There we go. There's Farley, and there he is. And this is one of the best pictures I've ever taken of my dog. And I took it just on a walk. It was snowing. It was really nice. Uh, I took a picture, and it blurred out that background and left the foreground in sharp focus. If you, and they've got additional filters that you can apply as well. The portrait mode in these cameras uh, just makes you, it, it, it's, it's a joy to use. You will absolutely love it. That is the fifth of my favorite new features or favorite features in iOS 11. Now, there's another feature in the camera mode, which I'm going to show you. Now, the iPhone takes pictures called live pictures, which means that what happens is when Apple takes it, when you take a picture with your iPhone, if you've got live pictures turned on, it actually takes, uh, grabs a few frames before and a few frames after of each picture that you take, and it so that you can so that you can actually pick a better frame if you want. Uh, but there's also some fun things that you can do with it. So let me show you on the walk today with Shan, where I took that picture. There's also let's just show you here. This is another picture we took. We we're trying to kind of do a little selfie. Now if I press and hold on this, watch what happens. Is we see a few seconds before and a few seconds after. Did you see that? You see all of the live images available to you. That in itself is cool. And you can choose any of those frames as the key frame that you're going to actually have when you like share photos. But if you swipe up from the bottom of the screen uh, of the photo, when you do that, you will see that you've got these effects that are available to you 
as a part of the live photo, including the ability to do a loop. And this is kind of like the boomerang thing in Instagram, but you see that you can save these images as GIF files then that are animated GIFs. Now, one of the issues that many of us are having with the phones is we love the size. I've got this eight plus here. They're nice and big, but they have totally stopped me from being able to do anything one-handed on the phone because they're so big I need two thumbs to type anything and do anything at all. Take a look here what we can do with, uh, or, or the, the extra, the feature that you probably don't know about that's built into the iOS keyboard. So I'm in my texting mode here, and if I just press and hold on that emoji icon, see the little emoji icon on the bottom? Watch what happens when I press and hold on it. Up pops this keyboard selector at the bottom that allows me to hit make a compressed keyboard that's gonna be on one side of the screen or the other. And now look at the keyboard. It's ideally designed for me to be able to type. With a normal keyboard, my thumb couldn't reach across to the Q or the A or the Z, Z key or the X key. It was too long a reach for me. But now when it's taking up maybe four fifths of the screen, I can comfortably one-handed type. So for the first time, on the iPhone 8 or any of the plus versions of the phone, I can have a cup of coffee and I can be texting away at the same time. That is being liberated on your smartphone. And if you wanna put the keyboard back, you just press and hold on the emoji key, move it back to the center, and then it's brought back to where it's supposed to be. I don't know why they've made this a press and hold on the emoji and it makes it really a kind of a hidden, almost like an Easter egg. Now. You've been able to take screenshots with your smartphone for ages, uh, forever. And let me just, uh, let me go to a picture. Maybe I'll take a, a screenshot of a picture. So let me go back to my photos to show you this. So this is something that you can do with your screenshot. So let's say I want to take a picture of this picture here, and a screenshot of it. If I hold down the, uh, the, the right hand, the, uh, the, the, uh, the close button and the home button at the same time, it takes a screenshot. We know how to do that. So there's the screenshot there. But did you know that when you open the screenshot that you have all of these markup tools available to you now. Take a look here. We've got all these tools where we can select colors and different types of pens. There we go. And you can select areas of the screen and move things around. Uh, so you can basically do entire markups of images or what people are writing to you or texting to you or sending to you. So you can create artwork or more compelling messages out of screen captures built right in to iOS 11. The ability to markup is number eight on my list of things that you may or may not know about that are built into iOS 11. Now, oh, this one is kind of cool too. Um, I bought these unbelievably expensive earbuds. They're AirPods, Apple's AirPods, and they're their Bluetooth wireless earbuds. And they work fantastically when I'm not afraid to use them because they're so expensive I'm terrified to use them. They've got this funky little case that actually charges them and they'll, it'll wirelessly charge them as well when Apple brings out their wireless charger. Uh, but the AirPods are really nice. To be honest, they're great for doing walks. They're great for working around the house. They're not great on airplanes and stuff. They don't have enough volume, but they're really nice wireless Bluetooth earbuds. But we sacrifice a lot with the wireless earbuds. Mainly what we sacrifice is we sacrifice the controls that we had in the tether before. On the old earbuds, you had volume controls that were available to you right kind of at the junction of where the, the Y of the wires happened. And you also had a button that would allow you to pause music and, and play mute and, and, and restart whatever it was you were listening to, be it a podcast or be it music. And you could also invoke Siri from that uh, where you could have Siri uh, do, do things for you such so as dial the phone or something like that. But with the AirPods, most of us didn't realize that there's some functionality built into them that allows us to do some of the things. Not as many things as we could do with the tethered one, but there's a few things that we can do. Allow me to show you. Um, if we go into the settings, and it's a little bit hidden. You go into Bluetooth, and then you hit on the information button next to the information icon next to the earbuds themselves. Down there, you'll see double tap on an AirPod. That means that if I tap twice on either one, my right or my left AirPod, I have the option to invoke these commands. So these are the commands that are available to us. Turn on or off, jump to the next track, play or pause, or invoke Siri. So those are the ones, those are the ones we have. We don't have volume control here. You have to do volume control from your device. But now, so if I, on my left pod, which is this side here, if I double tap, Siri should open. Let's see if that happens. What time is it? Thank you, Siri. 
Good evening to you too. That's very nice. So there we have by being able to double tap, it, it invokes Siri. So if I double tap on the right ear, ear uh, bud, if I'm listening to music, it will pause that music and then start it again. So if you're going for a walk and you're listening to music or podcast, somebody comes up to you, you want to say hi to you, you just double tap and it pauses and then double tap again and it goes. Now we used to do this always from the, from the tether, from the, uh, from the neck piece, but now we can do it within the earbuds. Not as much control as we had, but still a lot more than you might have known you had. I have to be very careful now and put these back in the precious little box because it costs more than my first car. All right. What's next? That's number nine. Oh, number 10 is adding and editing widgets. We've spent a lot of time talking about Control Center, kind of my new darling of uh, quick access to things within the, uh, within the iOS. But if a swipe to the right still brings up are widgets. Now widgets are basically mini versions of the different apps that we have on our smartphone. And again, this is a very customizable screen. You can set this up in a lot of different ways. But for me, since I always make sure I have my news there and some other things in my calendar there. Now you can again, edit this and adjust what's available to you in this screen by tapping on the edit bottom at the very bottom. And you will be blown away if you haven't done this before with the number of widgets that you can add to your screen. You could overwhelm your screen, frankly, with too many widgets if you're not careful, but take a look at pretty much any app that is widgetizable. Is that a word, Widget, widgetable, widgetizable? Every app that is widgetizable is here. So you can add any of them as a widget and you can just play around with it. Add them, see if you like them, delete them later. It doesn't matter. You're not deleting the app, you're just removing them from the widget roster. So the adding widgets is number 10. The final one that I'm going to show you, I didn't know this was available. I, I showed this once a long time ago to a friend and I said, oh, of course, everybody knows that's there. Well, everybody doesn't know this is here. That's why I'm showing you. If you go into your messages and you want to check the time that somebody, that you texted somebody because you, you just want to know, right, swipe to the left, pull it out and out comes the time that each message was sent on the day it was sent. Now, frankly, I think the reason I like this is it solves arguments for me saying, I told you that before you went there and you, somebody says, no, you didn't, you told me after. And I say, no, I did. And I can show the time that it was sent and replied to, et cetera. But that is, I think a pretty cool feature being able to swipe to the right. Anything happened if I swipe to the left? No, nothing happened. Nothing that I didn't, no pleasant surprises by swiping to the other direction. So you swipe from the right side to the left side, that's it. And it brings up the time of the messages. Pretty cool, eh? And that is my 11 features that are built into iOS that you may or may not have known about. Now, thanks for spending time with us. I hope you found this video to be useful and entertaining and educational and you learned maybe a few things about iOS 11 you didn't know about. And if there are ideas and things that you use in iOS that you think I might not be aware of, please share them in the comments. I would love to hear the features that make a difference for you. Remember to subscribe to our channel. Appreciate that. Hit the notification bell. Give us a thumbs up if you liked the video. And until next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.